This is the Norris Group's Real Estate Investor Radio Show, the award-winning show dedicated to thought leaders shaping the real estate industry and local experts revealing their insider tips to succeed in an ever-changing real estate market. Hosted by author, investor, and hard money lender, Bruce Norris. The Norris Group proudly presents our 14th annual award-winning event, I Survived Real Estate. Industry experts join Bruce and Aaron Norris to discuss evolving industry trends, real estate bubbles, inflation, and opportunities emerging for real estate professionals. All proceeds from the event benefit Make-A-Wish and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thanks for joining us. My name is Bruce Norris, and today, once again, our special guest is Derek Harms. Derek is the president of NSDREI. Derek brings a multifaceted real estate skill set to the organization. As a realtor, he's a leader in the San Diego market with Compass Realty. His savvy negotiations and innovative market strategies join uncompromising integrity as the emblem of Derek's service. Having over 10 years of experience and a young and fresh perspective on real estate world helped Derek stay ahead of the technology curve. Employing the most cutting edge marketing tools and techniques available, he has consistently reached the most eyes possible with eye-popping material. Derek, being an active investor himself, can view the market from an analytical perspective to ultimately solidify his client's bottom line. Real estate investment is more than an income stream for Derek, it's a lifestyle. He is an active residential redevelopment specialist in many different San Diego neighborhoods adding to his successful single family home flipping business in Southern California. Derek owns numerous properties throughout the United States. I looked at some stats before our conversation. So in San Diego, the, the average listing is selling for about 105% of ask. I, I've never seen that. Yep, and it's funny, I looked at very same stats and it's down a little bit from what it was like in late spring, um, but it's crazy how that, that is the case. And I wanted to, to, on the show, I wanted to give an actual update of the, the real feel, you know, how like the, the weather apps will tell you, like they'll, they'll tell you the temperature, but then they'll tell you the real feel. Well, yeah. I think, I think the real feel right now in San Diego is maybe, yeah, the data will still, will still show that, but what we're feeling is a homes are not selling the first weekend anymore. We're not seeing this, this glut of offers, you know, uh, I had 22 or was it 27 offers on, on a flip that we did back in May. I mean, that was just, it was just bananas. Like it was just, you know, people are offering up their, their firstborn children along with their offer. And it was, just, it was kind of gross. Um, but so we're not seeing that right now. We're seeing homes sit a little longer. We're seeing um, instead of five, six offers, maybe one or two. And it just feels like a, a little bit more of a normal, I'll say, uh, yeah. in, uh, of, a, of an approach. And we're, we're not having this crazy frenzy that, that we had, you know, even three months ago. Yeah, that was the word when, when you said that, I, I kicked in the word frenzy in my head. We're, out, we're past the frenzy stage, um, which, is, which is healthier uh, for the longevity of a market because the prices, we... Uh, I think California probably went up so over 30% in a 12 month period, which I think it was making up for lost time. You had all these really good charts and almost no reaction. You and I have talked during that time stretch sometimes where you kind of go and wow, I've never seen a better set of charts produce less results. And then the coronavirus hit. And I don't, I did not expect what happened after that, to be honest with you. I didn't see real estate becoming the hottest commodity and people, you know, one of the things as a realtor, about 45% of the listings were pulled during the initial, let's say three months of the coronavirus. And I, I don't know what happened to those listings, but by and large, you still have a month supply or less everywhere. Yeah. And it's the same. I mean, I have the data pulled from um, just came out a couple of days ago. So San Diego right now, inventory as of two days ago, we have 2,117 detached single family houses on the market. So call it 2,100 detached houses with land. That's nothing. And then we have less than a thousand. We have 950 condos uh, or attached uh, properties on the market right now. So combined about 3,000. 
And if you average those two, we're down like 40, 45% year over year in terms of inventory from August, 2020. That's, but that's crazy. It's bonkers. And, you know, if you think of a San Diego, uh, you know, a county with 3.3 million people for only 21 homes with land on the market, and it seems like, you know, you have historically the fall and holidays are, are times of lower inventory as well. It seems like this is going to continue for the rest of Q4. And, you know, what does that do to pricing as long as rates stay low? I mean, you tell me. Well, you know, what's interesting is the the new home building that hasn't happened over the last decade. So California usually goes from, okay, 50 or 60,000 homes at a bottom and graduates up to 150,000 over a progression of successful real estate years. Well, we're still at 50,000. So you start adding up, okay, you have a 150 year and it's still a 50 year. And last year, maybe it was what a 120 year and you had a 50 year. You start adding up all those numbers. You start saying, wow, we, we normally have 500,000 more new homes in the decade than we have. And what, so what's occurring is you get this crazy demand that has no place else to go, but on existing inventory. And so for the fourth time in history, existing inventory is now priced more per square foot than new. Oh, that's, that's just crazy. Well, but, what, but it lends credence to what everything you've said. When you own a rental, you own a basket of commodities and also a basket of labor. So everything you're saying, when you own a rental and you, you're having to search for uh, the dishwasher and the guy that installs it, if you own something, it's going up in value as we speak. You talked about real feel. Um, can you talk about the health of the club? You know, people go to investor clubs for, you know, mentorship for, hey, what's working out there? Uh, networking, you know, find deals, things like that. Um, how has the last year affected the club and where is it at now? Great question. And so let's flash back to March, 2020. We had national stay-at-home order. So we obviously could not have a large group meet in person again. So we shifted strictly to a, a Zoom platform. It took us a couple of months. We took a couple of months off while we pivoted and figured out what the heck we were going to do. Um, but what I will say is that the Zoom platform opened our eyes to the fact that we can get national talent that is totally comfortable hopping on a Zoom call in their living room or in their home office and hopping on with us for an hour and a half um, that we just simply cannot get to come to Oceanside the third Tuesday of every month from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. I mean, that, that's Bruce, you've been so gracious and in, in helping us and doing us that for, for a very long time. And, and we're very grateful for you and others who are willing to do that. But it's really hard to get to get consistent, high level in, individuals to do that. So what we've done now is actually, and the timing is pretty, um, is pretty impactful. I'm not sure when this will air, but it'd probably be afterwards. Um, but we just now are getting back to our first in-person meeting after... Uh, um, since, uh, the, since the lockdown back last year. And what we're doing now is we're shifting to a little bit different approach. We're now doing a hybrid. So we're going quarterly in-person events. And these events now are structured as more of like a, a, a network facilitation. So we're going to have four pros in, in what we call pros corners. Um, Ward Hannigan, Christy Sertwell, which I know you guys know, uh, Jay Sherman and Bruce May with Trillion Capital. I mean, these are all names you guys probably know every one of them. Sure. So, um, you know, and, and the whole point is to maybe more throw like a party slash networking event. And I'm going to do some things on the mic to get people to interact and, and really, really generate that, that networking component of real estate that's so important about shaking someone's hand and looking at, looking them in the eye and getting a feel for who they are as a human. And if you really want to do business with these people, um, and then then we'll go two quarter or two months uh, virtual, and this way we can get people we normally wouldn't, and then go back to a quarterly in person event. And none of this is set in stone. We're we're trying to be nimble again, that term that we mentioned earlier. And we think this is a really good model moving forward for the club, and we've gotten a lot of really good feedback. But I'll know for sure after next Tuesday when we meet at Stone Brewery in Escondido. <laughs> well, that's been one of the one of the hardest things is to bring value for whatever the membership is, you know, cost them right for before it was like, okay, every month I can go meet somebody new, I can go hear what people that are successful are doing. And so as a, you know, for us on, on our end, it's like, how do we bring that Norris group, you know, timing event, you know, how do we bring that value to the education space. And so I, I think this is a brilliant idea on your part. 
Well, thank you. And I cannot take full credit for it. You know, we have a large board and everyone's contributed. So, uh, you know, I'm just one, one piece of it, but, uh, yes, on behalf of the board, thank you for saying that. Yeah. You know, you guys have a really unselfish club of very good people. When you speak, uh, it's very interesting. You can tell what, why the club exists, you know, and, uh, very early on in my speaking career, I got invited to uh, a TV show and then to take uh, to speak at this guy's club. And uh, when I got there, there was an audience of disenchanted people because this guy, <laughs> this guy had apparently misused their investment money and he didn't show up at the meeting. So it was about, let's say the meeting was supposed to start at seven, five after seven. So, I mean, I'm a newbie to speaking to real estate investors, but I understood the business. So I said, tell you what, let's, let, let's just go and I'll teach. And so I taught for an hour and a half and they were all happy until that guy showed up. And then it was ugly on ugly. <laughs> I was going, wow, what happened? <laughs> so, you know, the cost of going to a club is so minute compared to the potential value with integrity, that, uh, the people that are there. Uh, that's just a no brainer to me. It's so true. And thank you for saying that. And, you know, the club has been around for a long time. And in San Diego, we have the reputation of, uh, with no disrespect to the other clubs, because there's really good ones, but of being the best. And I think that is because we really do focus on, on the people and the education and the networking and the growth and essentially for taking action in real estate, which real estate investing, which will essentially help, help grow your wealth and give you the freedom that, that we all want and seek. And when you meet the board members, when you meet everyone involved, like it truly is about the community that, that we serve. And it's easy to just say this, this stuff, but um, you know, as you've mentioned over the years, people who come back, they realize this is really, this is really what we're all about. And so we're really happy to do it. And I, I'll tell you what, the, the coolest thing is getting an email or a phone call or a text from someone who came to the meeting and uh, either you inspired them to, to get started in real estate or you introduced them to someone that they did a deal with or something like that, that comes back. Like that's rewarding. That's why we do this. And, and that keeps you going because you got to remember these clubs are all volunteer positions. You know, we all volunteer our time and energy and uh, we hope we all love doing it. And it's, it's really for that reason right there. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a lot of a lot of reasons why people end up end up teaching. Uh, Ward Hannigan. I mean, he he's so successful. What's he doing teaching? Well, he loves he loves teaching somebody that changes their lives. I mean, that's the whole deal, you know. And that's exactly. uh, not, nothing more exciting than getting a a note or a, a message going, uh, you know, because of you. Um, yeah, my life changed. That's no, no better feeling. So to have a club that has the right intent, somebody that's a speaker can spell that so quickly. So congratulations. That's just a great club you guys have. Well, thank you. And thanks again for both of you, you know, Bruce, you and Aaron, and um, really the whole Norse group being, being a part of it over, you know, almost two decades now. So it's, we're almost there. So thank you for, for your support. <laughs> Speaking right, of pleasure. teaching, um, Derek, you know, one of the things that you did with us is uh, cashing on a boom. Uh, and in your, in your hour that you, a little bit over an hour that you talked about, um, you you were really talking about having relationships and dealing with city departments. That's one of the things that has been a challenge for us in Florida. Um, is how how has the coronavirus affected dealing with city departments and government uh, in San Diego? Um, it's been like pulling teeth or scratching nails on a chalkboard or like <laughs> any unpleasant, uh, excruciating experience that you can and plug in plug it in. Um, it's been really difficult and you know, all the, the city buildings had shut down. Some, some certain uh, incorporated cities have now opened back up to the public where you can actually go in. Um, but if for a long time, you couldn't and you had to rely on electronic submission or you had to have a runner go down and they had one person outside who would take your plans or whatever it was. And it was just very, very difficult to, uh, to get any answers and, you know, the county was very, the city, in this case, city of San Diego was very disjointed early on, and they had just moved buildings and locations and, and files were getting lost. And it was, it was very difficult for a long time, and it still is. And, you know, th th this, this component of real estate investing, I wish would somehow get cleaned up and streamlined. It would just allow so many more investors to create that much more inventory quicker. 
Um, but it, it, it's really backlogged and it's, uh, you know, I wish I had, I wish I had the answer, but I don't. And so, yes, the short answer is it's been, it's been pretty difficult. Um, but I will add one more component to that too, is, uh, the utility companies. Well, SDG and E here in San Diego has a monopoly on, uh, on the energy department here. And it's, it's anytime you need anything from them, if you want a meter upgrade, you want a panel upgrade, God forbid you want to want to move your meter from one part of the house to another because um, you're reconfiguring. Well, jump in line and hope that you get a response in 10 or 12 weeks. And if you do, well, then it's going to be another three to six after that before you get, you know, a plan or whatever. And it's just like, really? Like that just doesn't seem that hard. Like, what, what is it? Like, I'll even help. I'll like submit plans, whatever it is. And um, but you're hamstrung, right? Because you can't sell a house without a without an electrical meter, without a gas meter, whatever it is. So it, that part has been has been pretty difficult as well. And I know a lot of people listening right now would agree. Yeah, cities cities haven't been fun to deal with in California for a long time. They you didn't need a coronavirus to make it even, you know, five times worse. That's for sure. Absolutely. And I, I wish that someone smarter than me would, would come along and, and create the solution to make this easier. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, do you have a lot of rentals and how is the rental market down there? Um, I do have a portfolio of rentals and the rental market has been extremely strong. And um, I, I will say uh, I, I pulled a lot of property managers here in town recently, and I was getting extremely high collection rates you know, 99%. Um, and not many people were falling behind. I, there were a, a few here and there, depending on the neighborhood and the location. But for the most part, collection rates have been high. Uh, rental inventory is low. Rental pricing has gone up. Um, and, and, you know, it, San Diego it doesn't have too many new units being built. And I will say we do have some uh, larger apartment buildings coming in. Um, and a lot of those are, are a class properties. So, you know, if your rentals are, are not a, let's say you're, you know, B properties or even C's, whatever, um, you really don't have much competition. So uh, of new, excuse me, new stock coming online. So, right. uh, you know, so it's, uh, it, it's been really strong and it, it feels like um, it, it's only going to get better uh, in the near, in the near term. What's, what's really interesting about California's last 18 months is you've lost a lot of migrating adults. And it has had no impact on price increases or vacancies. Uh, it, you're just loaded with everybody wants the house, uh, whether they want to rent it or own it. So that's, a, that's an interesting uh, outcome for somebody that looked at migration as a significant factor and you look at that and go, wow, look at that. That's, uh, that's really interesting to me. So some of, it, some of it you look at and go, okay, that's a new one. I, I have to think about why that's true. Florida is getting lots of migrating adults. So the fact that it's doing really well, that, that seems very congruent to what I know. But when you're losing a bunch and nothing happens negative, that's, that was interesting. It is. And I think, um, you know, before you, you purchase a property here in, in San Diego that you're going to plan on keep for a rental, which obviously you, you go through an underwriting and you kind of try to take a 30,000 foot level, like what does the demand look like this long term? And if you look at San Diego, we have one of the largest biotech industries in the country between us and Boston and Berkeley. We're the three hubs in the country. Military is one of the largest in the country. Um, we have a lot of tech now that's coming into San Diego, lot, tons of, uh, of, of hospitals and, and nursing industry, and we have a huge platform for that. So, and then you look at the geographic sec sector of San Diego. Well, we've got Camp Pendleton to the north, we have mountains to the east, and Mexico to the south, and the Pacific Ocean to the west. So we're, there's no real extra space to build. So what does that do? Um, it means you got to get more dense and... Yeah. Um, you know, so I think if you're able to get in front of quality assets here in San Diego and, and be able to figure out a way to dig in and hang on long term, it's going to pay dividends for, for many years to come, and especially with rates where they're at right now, Bruce. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the only thing that's on sale right now is interest. Absolutely. So get this. I close on Monday on a refinance 
of a, it was a duplex that I bought and, and turned into uh, a triplex, added a unit and um, not, not Bakersfield. No, no, this here in San Diego. This is in a suburb called North Park. So really uh, urban hip region. Um, and, you know, I'm able to do a, I'm able to do a cash out refinance 30 year loans at a 3.25% rate and not owner occupied. And right. it's like, are you kidding me? That's essentially free money if you factor right. inflation in. And That's right. Like, why would you not do that? How is this not going to create wealth long term? And why do not more people want to do this? Yeah, no, that's a uh, now that wasn't that was Fannie Mae type loan or not? Correct. Oh, it was Fannie Mae. OK. Yeah. All right. Is there a lot of people in the club doing ADUs and talking about density? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, the, the popularity has grown lately and there now are a lot of ADU specialists that that are in San Diego. And, you know, it's a. Uh, it definitely is is a hot button, and there's been some some density changes in San Diego's um, in San Diego's uh, uh, co code, and it's zoning. that have really actually yeah, in the zoning that have really opened up some some doors for investors. And you have to it's a foreign language, and you have to know uh, how to, how to decipher it. And there are some really cool deals out there if you know how to look. Um, so I encourage anyone uh, who, who's interested in this is. You know, we've got to get really familiar with your local zoning laws and see where these uh, these these density bonuses and and the helpful little things that are written in the code to inspire in developers to add density therein. Now, I know Aaron is really a much more of an expert on the ADUs. Is there still a process that's more um, state controlled than locality, like a San Diego controlled, as far as if somebody wants to do an ADU, it has to be approved in a certain time frame, or do you get hung up on all the local stuff as well? So my experience with ADUs, we've done quite a few now, um, is that the certain time frame means nothing, and the the city reviewers will take their sweet time, and they'll, you know, I, I think the and it, it'll take. I've had one take three months, and I've had one take almost a year, and. And it's like, there was no rhyme or reason for it. The more difficult trans and process property, like, you know, uh, uh, inc uh, easement issues and uh, et cetera. Like I thought that one was going to take forever. It took three months. And then I had a very slam dunk, straightforward one take almost a year. And so you just, you just don't know. And I, I've, I know that there's been some state laws in terms of timing of how fast these things are supposed to go. But everyone I talk to, it's just kind of, it is what it is, and you know you hope it gets pushed through the pile quicker. Um, uh, last question on ADUs: Do you feel that when you put an ADU behind the existing structure, it changes who wants to rent the front structure? I think uh, the answer is it depends, and it's how you carve up the lots and how you make these homes feel. And I'm a huge advocate of spending the extra money and carving up your lot to make both feel extremely private and, and not like you're, you're connected in any, in any sense of the term, I mean, fencing and vegetation and uh, parking and whatever mailboxes and walkways and um, you know, lighting. It's like, you really want to make these feel like separate structures. If that's your plan, right. Is to rent them out to separate entities, uh, right. separate tenants and et cetera. Um, and I, I think you can, you can do that too. And the more, the more you do that, I think, um, it, it opens up your, your, uh, your tenant pool because more people will be interested in doing that rather than feeling like you're staring into, you know, some other person's master bedroom, right? You know, no, no one wants to do that. No, no. We have an investor in LA who actually got asked, Hey, you know, he was, he was like, Hey, I'm going to put an ADU and they, they showed them like what they're going to put in. They're like, can I move into that instead? <laughs> Cause they're, that investor just does. You know, a really good job with matching the high quality new ADU with the finishes and things that are in the in the in the first house. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you know, and uh, that was one of the the things I wanted to mention today. Is I you know I talked to a lot of guys in town about all right, what are you doing? What's working? What's not working? Like, are you spending extra on renovations right now? Are you just slapping it together and putting it on the market? And I'll say overwhelmingly, the response has been no. We're actually spending extra time right now in creating a space that people really want to live in. We're reconfiguring, we're putting extra money into better materials. And we, we really are, are trying to create a, a product that 
that that really uh, most people would want to move into and you know i think there was a time early spring this year it didn't matter what you did you threw it on the market you were going to sell it with multiple offers in the first weekend but um going back to the adus and just with how renovations in general right now i think everyone's doing a little higher quality that you know the the big operators are just doing higher quality and and you're you're, you're getting uh getting paid handsomely for it one of the things that Aaron is talking about doing with one of his new rentals in Florida, um, because of you know the the industries that you talked about that are in San Diego with with tech and with hospitals, um, have have you delved in or do you know anybody that's doing like share, a shared model where they're doing you know renting the rooms instead of the whole house? So the only person I know that does that is Christy Sertwell, and um, she doesn't do it in San Diego. As a matter of fact, she'll be at our event um, next week. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going with her. Um, I, I don't know anyone in San Diego who does room by room. And I know there are some guys out by San Diego State area that, that have models like that. But um, I haven't really got the details on it and, and been too involved. I tried buying one, one duplex by San Diego State a while ago. And I was going to try it if I got the property, but I didn't end up getting it. Um, so I don't have too much good data for you on that. I think you can get a duplex in Barstow for under 400 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at the values now. I'm like, man, if I would have held it, but, uh, you know, selling it. Hey, uh, Yucca Valley is on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just had somebody say that, uh, yeah, they, they had a bidding war for something that was 500 square feet. And I think it was in one of those areas and it sold for, Four hundred dollars plus a foot in a bidding war. And it was five hundred square feet. Yeah, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. I remember when four hundred bucks a square foot used to be a thing in San Diego, um, and it's uh, it's really not anymore. It's like it depends. You go further east, and maybe some some really far northeast counties or southeast counties, but it's you know that that, that number it, it, you don't find too often anymore. Yeah, that's. You know, when you're in Florida, we're building, you know, you're building new homes for say 300 grand and you're just going, wow. Yeah. You just, it's, it's a different world in a way. So it, it is, I'm actually going to be in, uh, in Pinellas County in two weeks and my mom lives out there. So I'm going out there and uh, I got my eyes on, on, a, on, on a few areas. So I'm going to go take a look. And, um, you know, when you start to look at some of the, the returns out there compared to what and you're getting here it's like you flip one house here and you take that and you go, go buy something in florida it's you know it's not a bad option no no we certainly encouraged did that with my own stuff so anyway well derek i thank you for joining us and uh is always making us feel a valuable part of your club and allowing us to educate the people that have attended your clubs we appreciate that very much Bruce, on behalf of myself and the board and literally every one of our members and guests that has been listening to you speak at our club for more than a decade, we, we, we say thank you. We're really grateful for what you bring to the table. And I know everyone listening to your podcast and just who knows you in general, we're, we really appreciate your reports and everything you've been doing for so long. It, it, it means so much to so many people. And I really hope that you take a minute to actually um, digest the fact that like it really is important and we really are also grateful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Have yourself a good rest of the week. Well, thanks, thank Derek. you guys. Joey, thanks for your time too. You guys, we'll talk later. See I survived real estate.com for event details, information on all our generous sponsors and to connect with our speakers. For more information on hard money loans and upcoming events with the Norris Group, check out thenorrisgroup.com. For information on passive investing with trust deeds, visit tngtrustdeeds.com. The Norris Group originates and services loans in California and Florida under California DRE License 01219911, Florida Mortgage Lender License 1577, and NMLS License 1623669. For more information on hard money lending, go to thenorrisgroup.com and click the hard money tab.